China state media says the country has just unveiled a new train that levitates on magnetic fields and can travel over 600 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately, there are no rail lines that can make use of such a train in China at the moment. Here are the details. Reuters reports that China unveiled a maglev train capable of a top speed of 600 kilometers per hour or 370 miles per hour on Tuesday, July 21st. That maximum speed would make the train, which was self-developed by China and manufactured in the coastal city of Qingdao, the fastest ground vehicle in the world. Using electromagnetic force, the maglev train levitates above the track with no contact between itself and the rail. This means that the train hovers on magnetic fields created by huge currents of electricity. China has been using the technology for almost two decades on a very limited scale. Shanghai has a short maglev line running from one of its airports to town. While there are currently no intercity maglev lines in China that could make good use of the higher speeds, cities like Shanghai and Chengdu have started to conduct research. At 600 km per hour, it would only take two and a half hours to travel from Beijing to Shanghai by train, a journey of more than 1,000 km, or 620 miles. Such a journey would take three hours by plane or five and a half hours by high-speed rail. Countries from Japan to Germany are also looking to build maglev networks, although high costs and incompatibility with current track infrastructure remain hurdles to rapid development. Advances in train technology have taken off in recent years, with Japan developing a bullet train capable of reaching 400 km per hour or 250 miles per hour. The Times newspaper reports that trains powered by human sewage and discarded food will be introduced to Britain's railway for the first time under plans to phase out dirty diesel engines. A full-size bio-ultra train capable of carrying 120 passengers is being developed with government funding. The lightweight, low-cost train will be fueled by biomethane. Biomethane is a renewable gas made from organic waste. Britain currently has a number of sewage plants fitted with fermentation tanks. These fermentation tanks are filled with a combination of human sewage sludge, rotting food waste, and other organic waste to create a potent mixture that is digested by bacteria in a process that creates methane gas. The gas then rises to the top of the pungent mixture, where it is siphoned off to mechanisms that separate the methane from other gases. The new, lightweight trains will burn the gas in special engines that will convert it into electrical power, which will charge the train's batteries and drive its motors. The rail cars are expected to reach speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. China banned cryptocurrencies on Tuesday, May 19th. The ban forbids any financial institutions and payment companies from doing business related to cryptocurrencies. Markets responded negatively, and the move led to a plunge in cryptocurrency prices worldwide. Funny enough, the ban comes as China is testing out its own digital currency, called the DCEP or Digital Yuan. Here are the details. The South China Morning Post reports that China's sovereign digital currency, called the DCEP, or Digital Currency Electronic Payment, is already undergoing trials. This so-called digital yuan is managed privately by the People's Bank of China under a centralized system, which is the complete opposite of most forms of cryptocurrencies, which are designed to disperse power away from the government. Unlike cryptocurrencies, all transactions with the digital yuan would be completely traceable by the Chinese government. The database can be checked in real time and can be used to keep digital records and checks against citizens who have committed money laundering, tax evasions, or similar offenses. The DCEP will be used to simulate everyday banking activities, including payments, deposits, and withdrawals from a digital wallet. Online payment services like Alipay and WeChat Pay are already popular payment methods in China, with mobile transactions accounting for four of every five payments in 2019. China has made it clear so far that cryptocurrencies in their current form are unwelcome in the country. It warns its citizens against the wild speculation of cryptocurrencies while pushing for a fully centralized digital currency that could give it unprecedented powers. The Guardian newspaper revealed that China has likely been spying on U.S. citizens via Caribbean phone networks for years. The paper based its article on research by Gary Miller, a former mobile network security executive. Miller has been analyzing sensitive signals data for years and says China appears to have used mobile phone networks in the Caribbean to surveil U.S. mobile phone subscribers as part of its espionage campaign against Americans. He says that China uses one of its state-controlled phone operators to direct signaling messages to U.S. subscribers, usually while they're traveling abroad. Signaling messages are commands that are sent by telecoms operators across the global network. They allow operators to locate mobile phones and connect users to one another. But some 
some signaling messages can be used for tracking, monitoring, or intercepting communications. Miller said that China has lately favored more targeted espionage and are likely using Caribbean networks as proxies to conduct its attacks, having close ties with these countries in both trade and technology investment. On Tuesday, October 20th, the U.S. Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against Google accusing the tech giant of illegally creating and maintaining monopolies in search and search advertising. The DOJ's lawsuit is the result of more than a year of investigating alleged anti-competitive practices at the company and the first such antitrust case in the tech world in decades. The landmark lawsuit alleges that Google violated antitrust laws to act as a gatekeeper to the Internet. The complaint says the company unlawfully blocked out competitors by reaching deals with phone makers, including Apple and Samsung, to be the preset default search engine on devices. The DOJ lawsuit alleges that Google also abused the dominance of its Android operating system to strong-arm manufacturers to preload Google's apps onto phones. The tech giant denied that it is engaged in anti-competitive behavior. Google's senior vice president of global affairs said on a blog post that people use Google because they choose to, not because they're forced to, or because they can't find alternatives. The DOJ lawsuit, though, heavily criticizes Google's business contracts with outside partners. The complaint says that the tech giant locks up search distribution on Android, which powers almost 9 out of every 10 smartphones shipped globally. The tech giant's antitrust legal woes may just be beginning. Separate from the DOJ announcement, seven states, including New York and Colorado, said they plan to conclude parts of their own investigations into Google in the coming weeks. A massive renewable energy project is underway in Australia that would include the construction of the world's biggest solar farm and the world's largest battery to deliver electricity using the world's longest submarine power cable to Singapore, according to a report in Science Alert. The Australia Asian Power Link would include a 10 gigawatt array of photovoltaic panels spread across 15,000 hectares, an area equal to 20,000 soccer fields, in the remote Northern Territory town of Tennant Creek, roughly halfway between Darwin and Alice Springs. Sun Cable, the company that owns the project, says on its website that electricity generated by the solar plant would be stored during the Australian day at a gigantic 30 gigawatt battery in Darwin and transmitted in the evening to Singapore. The network would transport electricity from the solar farm at Tennant Creek, north to Darwin, and then on to Singapore via a 4,500-kilometer high-voltage direct transmission network. Some of the electricity would be used in Darwin and plug into the Northern Territory grid, but most would be exported via a 3,800-kilometer submarine cable running along the ocean floor. Sun Cable says it could provide 20% of Singapore's power needs, The Guardian reports, helping the city-state wean itself from its dependence on increasingly expensive gas-fired power. That is, if the project continues to move forward. The Washington Post reported in August that the Singapore government was non-committal about its interest. According to the current plan, construction would begin in 2023, energy production would start in 2026, and the exported electricity would start flowing in 2027. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.